Welcome to our presentation of Isaac Newton, input-based approximate curvature for Newton's method to be presented at iClear 2023. I am Felix Petersen and this is joint work with my collaborators Tobias Sutter, Christian Borgelt, Dong Sung Hu, Hilde Kühne, Yu Kai Sun and Oliver Deussen. So, let's get into what input-based approximate curvature actually means. Let's start with the basics. We can formulate the gradient descent update step as changing the parameters by negative eta times the gradient of the loss with respect to the parameters. Extending this by multiplying it with the inverse of the Hessian, we obtain Newton's method. In practice, especially for neural networks, the Hessian is not well conditioned and thus we want to regularize it via the Tikhonov regularization. Further. Instead of using the Hessian matrix, we typically use the Gauss-Newton matrix, which is often equivalent to the Hessian. So, now we will consider how we can actually compute this update direction. The Gauss-Newton matrix can be defined as the expectation of the Kronecker product of outer products, specifically the Kronecker product between the outer product of the gradients of the loss between a prediction and a sample from the prediction with respect to the layer's output Z, as well as the outer product of the layer's input A. As this matrix is expensive to compute, a popular approximation is the KFAC approximation, which approximates the expectation of Kronecker products by the Kronecker product of expectations. Note that the use of Kronecker products itself is not an approximation and that the KFAC approximation arises from interchanging the order of Kronecker product and expectation. Let's look further into how we can compute the KFAC approximation of the Gauss-Newton matrix. The inputs A to our layer are readily available and this part is easy to compute. However, for G bar, the gradient of the loss to a random sample of the prediction would require a second backpropagation pass and is therefore expensive to compute. Note how the loss for this gradient is not between the prediction f of x theta and the ground truth y, but instead it is between the prediction and a sample from the prediction, that is y hat. It is important to note that we cannot simply replace y hat with y and use our gradients at this point. Further, it is only a rank round approximation and in practice we might need to use an even higher rank approximation requiring even more backboard passes. As this is very expensive, we would ideally like to avoid computing g bar at all and thus we want to investigate whether we might be able to replace the expectation of outer products of g bar simply by the identity thereby removing the computational overhead almost entirely. For this investigation, let's introduce a generalization of the Tikhonov regularized KFAC Gauss-Newton matrix-based update step, which we call Zeta. Here, we introduce two regularization parameters, lambda g and lambda a, for independently regularizing the g bar part and the a part. For this formulation, we can show that, in the limit of both lambdas going to zero, zeta is the Newton update direction, and in the limit of both lambdas going to infinity, zeta is the gradient descent update. If only lambda a goes to infinity, the a transpose a term goes towards the identity, and when lambda g goes to infinity, the g bar transpose g bar term goes towards the identity. We prove the correctness of update zeta independent of both lambdas by showing that zeta is always a direction of increasing loss independent of the choices of lambda g and lambda a. Now let's dive further into how well zeta actually performs depending on lambda g and lambda a by running some experiments. On the vertical axis we show different choices of lambda a and on the horizontal axis we show different choices of lambda g. For each setting we use an independent training of the model. The color corresponds to the log loss of a classifier trained on MNIST, that is, the lower and thus the darker or bluer, the better. What we observe in this plot is that we can almost arbitrarily increase lambda g, that is, go to the right, without a real loss in performance. Based on this observation, we can also look at lambda g equal to infinity, and observe that, again, we lose almost no model performance during this step. Let's have a look at some other models. Again we can observe the same behavior for other settings. This observation was one of the primary motivations for our work. What this means is that it is reasonable to set lambda g to infinity as it allows for easier computation while maintaining performance. Specifically, 
we call the limit of zeta with lambda g to infinity, zeta star, or Isaac. And we can see that this limit is independent of g bar and effectively replaces the respective term with the identity. Via some algebraic transformations, including the Woodbury matrix identity and the Kronecker product rules, we can empirically estimate the update zeta star as g transpose times a small matrix times a. Here, g is the gradient of the layer output and b is our batch size. We note that g transpose a is the conventional way of computing the gradient update and backpropagation. In between this computation, we interject a matrix of size b times b, which only requires the inversion of a b times b matrix and only depends on a, which means that the cost of our method only scales with the batch size, and for mini-batch training, the cost becomes negligible. After discussing the theory and method, let's go into the experimental evaluation. First, we consider training of an MNIST autoencoder with the loss plotted against the training time. We can see that Isaac only requires a little more time than gradient descent while reaching a substantially lower loss at every time during training. Next, let's compare it to a full rank KFEC which has substantially larger runtime extending beyond the scope of our plot. Finally, comparing to the zeta formulation, we can observe that Isaac is substantially faster while reaching about the same final loss. Second, let's have a look at classification and generalize our setting somewhat. Specifically, we want to investigate what would happen if we train some layers of a 5-layer network with the Isaac update while we train other layers with gradient descent. We can see that the red line with all layers with Isaac outperforms the blue line, which is gradient descent. However, we can see that applying Isaac only to the first layer, that is the green line, is even a little better than applying Isaac to all layers while reducing the overhead. If we apply Isaac only in to the last layer, the performance gain is rather small and it's only better in early and late training. Applying Isaac to the first three layers performs best. Applying Isaac only to the last three layers performs comparable to gradient descent and therefore does not really give us an advantage. Applying it only to every other layer leads to mixed results. What we can take away from this experiment is that we can apply Isaac to a subset of layers and that applying Isaac to the earlier layers is more important than applying it to the later layers. For some larger scale experiments, we consider BERT fine tuning on three tasks, COLA, MRPC and STSB. We can observe that Isaac outperforms gradient descent also in these large case settings. Finally, Let's look at how to use Isaac. You can install Isaac with pip install Isaac directly from PyP. To use it, take your PyTorch model, for example this 5 layer neural network, and simply replace the torch and n linear layers with Isaac linear layers and add the lambda a hyperparameter. So these are the only things you need to change when switching from gradient descent to Isaac. You can simply use SGD with or without momentum for training and during backpropagation as all necessary information is already available, the gradient is simply replaced by the Isaac update zeta star. Let's look at the speed and memory requirements. We can see that the speed is almost equivalent between gradient descent and Isaac. In fact, in the paper, we show that for mini-batch training, the computational overhead is asymptotically vanishing. Further, the method requires only a very small memory overhead when comparing gradient descent, blue, to Isaac green. If we compare it to the popular KFEC, we can see that Isaac is, with respect to iteration speed and memory requirements, much faster, more lightweight, and it's also easier to implement. Thank you very much for your attention. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more machine learning research content. We will make the source code publicly available on GitHub. Also, make sure to join us at our virtual poster session or drop me an email if you have any questions.